Thank you very much. So, as a music musician, I've always been interested in using computation to push music forward, to create new kind of musical experiences. And I started back in, in, in the 80s, uh, where there, what's exciting was that computer can make things faster and much more productive. You don't have to cut a tape and paste a tape. You can do copy-paste with a computer. Later, it became uh, much more creative. You can use a whole set of new sounds that only uh, can be generated digitally, and you can express yourself uh, in new ways that you cannot do with traditional musical instruments. So the computer is a very useful tool. Uh, it's a great tool. And, and I see some of you kind of nodding. I'm, I'm sure w whether you are a lawyer, engineer, or um, an artist, you use computers uh, as tools. And for me, it took many years to figure out that I got it all wrong. The computer is not a tool. Robots are not tools. Well, th they can be, and most people use them as tools. But if you only lo look at them as tools, you are missing up on some of the great things that they can do. And I think I'm getting ahead of myself because I want to build a story. How did I realize that I can uh, actually use a computer as a completely something different than a tool or an instrument? But let's go back, like, I don't know, 14 years, me still as a student very excited about using a musical instrument as tools, as instruments. And back then, uh, most computers were beige and big and ugly. And I thought, why wouldn't computer uh, look like this if I want them as a musical instrument? And the reason that I wanted them to look like this was that I was trying to push musical expression and specifically new gestures to create music. So this is a great gesture, uh, very expressive. This is a great gesture. But they are all limited by the instrumentation, by, by the physical physicality of the instrument. What if there are all kind of gestures that are very expressive, very creative, like pushing and, and squeezing and mashing, that we just don't have the physical musical instrument to create it. But if you have conductive fabric, which is uh, this uh, fabric over here, that can sense how much you squeeze and, and push and play with something that is soft, an instrument that is soft, maybe you can create new kind of expression and create new kind of music that uh, will allow people that are not musicians to get into music. And in the next clip that I'll show, uh, you will see how I squeeze and push this conductive fabric-based embroid embroidered instrument that basically you can embroider whatever you want. Agronomically, you can design any instrument and any set of electro that you want. And first, I mix some sounds together in a new expressive way. Then I create sounds. The more I squeeze, the higher the notes goes, and the computer helps with uh, the scales and other things. So people that do not know much about scales can actually become expressive playing music. Each of these instruments allows a child to dive into the middle of a musical experience to immediately do something without having a long training. So I found the flute. I can start with the flute. I can change the volume of the flute, the curve of the flute. Here's the piano. I decided to bring it next. So I control the curve or the, or the contour of the, of the music without necessarily knowing exactly what I can and what notes I play, but uh, trying to be expressive this way. And then I thought about how about we try to use computation to allow a group of people that usually we don't think can play music to become expressive as well. And this group of people are very young uh, kids, maybe even infants, but definitely toddlers. And instead of putting them in front of a computer and tell them play, which they usually cannot if, if you are a, an infant and try to let them be expressive with traditional musical instruments, uh, Ma how about we put the instrument in an environment that they're already familiar with, such as this kind of pool uh, filled with balls, and maybe if we could put some piezoelectric sensors, we can sense how they move, and we can let them be expressive and creative using computation and using sensors. I think you could have saw, seen the eureka moment when she realized, I'm controlling the music. It's not just music in, in a science museum. Uh, or Actually, this was in the Boston Children's Museum, installed in the Boston Children's Museum. It's not just music background. I'm the one that is creating this music, and no other instrument probably would allow me to do that. Another area where I was still very excited about the computer as an instrument is networks. 
Uh, imagine that you play uh, in a trio and you play the viola and someone else plays the violin. As you play the viola, you're not only controlling your sound or your pitch, you're also controlling the violin and make it play more pizzicato or more legato, uh, fast attack or short attack. The violin player would definitely change the way he plays. Or, and this new gesture that would be maybe more abrupt if it's suddenly pizzicato can be sent to change to the cello to send the scale from major to minor and so on. So there's a whole new set of expressions that you can create in a collaborative, interconnected networks that you cannot do with traditional instruments, but you can do with technology. And in this particular instrument, it's called the beat bugs. You will see that you can create sound with gestures. Also, I was exploring new gestures. This bend sensor antenna, you can squeeze them. One of them will change the pitch. One of them will change the rhythm. Uh, the more you squeeze the rhythm, the more unstable the rhythm becomes, the rhythm antenna. Uh, you don't know you don't have to know what's the difference between triplet and quarter notes, but, but you feel the expressive aspects of playing music, and then you can share and send it to people, and they can manipulate and change what you created, send it back to someone else, and create some, this kind of a collaborative network. Beat bugs are supposed to allow even someone with no experience at all of playing an instrument the ability to create and collaborate. this one and play with it and when you point towards me I can play with you all right uh, and then of course giving it to kids and playing with kids not just an example uh, you will see how the kids first create a rhythm and then send it back and forth and share it uh, the system will wait for everyone to hit together and then it will group people me and you are playing now I control you new music uh, they can, uh, someone else controls someone else's music. We don't have an octophonic system here, but the sound comes from each beat bug. So in the end, you'll see they do the wave. This is in Scotland, actually, so they were very big on soccer. They do the wave that you can see in soccer games or, or, or in football games, too. And you, you can hear the music goes uh, through eight speakers. Here, it will not really, really come through, but imagine. Let me show you how we can uh, work with voice uh, and create your own voice. We work with some uh, hip hop artists that can do the same, do, similar do, things that do, I just do, mentioned. Do like your but recording their own voice. Do like your they, 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 and manipulate their voice. And send it to someone else. Okay, uh, a, a new application that will allow you to create uh, music with is Meshup Artists that allows you, if you're not a musician, to select music uh, from your own iTunes uh, and let the application mesh music together. We analyze uh, the sounds, we analyze the tempo, the tonality, what instrumentation is there in there, and then you can select the style and you can mesh up the uh, music and create new music out of old music. And everything is automatic, you just have to choose the order and, and uh, select some of the songs that work up together. And the most sophisticated it became uh, the analysis and, and the kind of combination of music, the more I realized that looking at the computer as an instrument is really the wrong way to look at it. And I come back to uh, how I started. Uh, the computer, or the robot in this case, can be a musician rather than a tool, can be a companion rather than an instrument. If you can use the computer as someone that can listen to you, an entity that can listen to you, and then understand what you're playing and play back at you different than how humans would, maybe you can push the interaction between you and the computer much further and create much more interesting uh, collaborations. So in order for you to interact with an entity, interact with a musician rather than an instrument that is there to serve you, I felt that you need to have a physicality to it. And that's where I moved from robots, sorry, from computers to robots. 
And a robot has many benefits that computers don't. I can synchronize my gestures. I can see where I'm about to hit, just like a guitar player and a drummer will try to synchronize their gestures. So there's a whole idea of embodiment. Uh, it can look at me with something is interesting or not interesting. It can basically listen like a human. We can have algorithms in the robots that understand music like a human and then play like a machine. And for that, we use all kinds of algorithms that humans would never use, such as genetic algorithms and fractals and all kinds of new ways to think about music that only computers, or in this case, robots can play. And I can use the visual cues. I can synchronize my gestures. Uh, I can use the physicality. And I, of course, I can use acoustic sound because all of the interaction with the computers are not acoustic and there's something really rich about the acoustic sound. So first, let's see some basic listening. If I start to clap, you probably will be able to clap with me. For computers, it's not that easy just to get the beat detection. So first, we worked on just beat. The first uh, computer, uh, the first robot uh, was called Hailey, and let's see how it listens. playing softer and still detects a bit. So, so we get some basic uh, understanding of um, music like humans. I can understand what the beat is. L then let's try to improvise. And we use all kind of stochastic algorithm. Look at the Darbuka player, professional Darbuka player, how he responds to the improvisation that the robot is using. As I mentioned, improvise like a machine, something new. beats, play with the people and take the melody from here or the pitch from here and the rhythm from here and improvise, create something new together, try to uh, inspire us to play differently. Another thing that you, uh, robots are much better than human is, is trying to create all kinds of complicated rhythm. For example, with one arm it can play a nine quarter beat and with a different arm it can play four, qu uh, or four quarter or seven quarter in this case and then create really sophisticated rhythms. In this case, it grabbed a rhythm from us before the, the uh, section I'm going to show. From one of us, it took the nine quarter. From a different, it took the seven. It will play first the nine, then the seven, and then plays them together. And you see how every 63 beats, it converge and diverge. That's a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not together. Some sophisticated things that can inspire us to uh, con contribute and, and, and help uh, create music that cannot uh, do with humans. Uh, but you can also just try to play together in unison with the robot, which always works, almost fish for, for cheers from the audience. Yeah, it always works. Uh, the next step was to go Melody, and not only rhythm. And that's a new robot that is called Shimon. Uh, the first thing we try to do is to try to let it listen and synchronize and anticipate. And later, we also tried to allow social gestures, and that's why we build the head that can help nod when the beat is detected, can look at you as a camera. But let's start with um, the first piece before we had the head. Just look at some of the listening and understanding of music. have a social gesture, we add the head and it detects the beats, can look at you, can understand what you're doing. And here it doesn't play anything, it just tries to become social, something that you could play with. Improvisation. Uh, 
yeah, that, that's pretty funny. And still we show everything comes together. Uh, improvisation. There, these are great uh, improvisers, Monk and, and Coltrane. We will never be able to, in, in the foreseeable future, to improvise like them or create a robot that improvises like them. Uh, what we can do is try to analyze their style, get some sense of the style by using statistical methods, Markov models, and then we can combine and share the style, have 30% Monk, 30% Coltrane and maybe 40% my own music and try to create music that is again different than humans would play and maybe push it further to create something new, interesting that no one else can play. So here you see how I play with a phone and in this case it will work, it will send it back to the robot when I'm done. I'm playing a small, a, a short melody and when I'm done with it I'm sending it to the robot that repeats it and then start to improvise. How about using its own camera? It's not fair that I can see it and listen to it, and it can only uh, listen to me. So we put a camera, and now you can see that it can improvise based on what it sees. And of course, also interact with musical instruments in a new way that is not necessarily jazz. It listens to the motifs that the player is playing and try to surprise it with sometimes playing the same things and sometimes go in all kinds of new directions that will push music forward. Inspired by the African marimba player. Maybe the last clip that I will show you is maybe uh, the, the most fun clip and we hear Georgia Tech and you probably have seen this clip before, but if we really to achieve robotic musicianship, in addition to all the listening and improvisation and playing and accompaniment and all of the basic, we also have to have some personality, right? Musicians have personality. And the last clip that I'm going to show show some of the personality, the back and forth uh, between two players. One robotic, one not so much. <laughs> There's only one place where great students and advanced technology strike just the right note. Thank you very much.